Hi guys. Well, the sun is breaking through on this muggy, soupy day in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm here on this sticky, I believe it is Wednesday, June 9th, 2021. Somewhere in there I, I lose count and uh, I don't know what's on tap today. I've been working myself a little too hard need to take it easy today. So today's chronicle, I am going to the best that I can review this new documentary on Netflix, which I highly recommend called Breaking Boundaries, The Science of Our Planet. And uh, I need to, uh, I need to it is rated PG because of gore. Uh, gore. Rated PG because of gore. Damn it! Let me find the uh, official... You, you know, guys, the bitch about this with, with Netflix and anyone else, it, it, it's damn hard to review a, a documentary that I can't play because of getting uh, because of getting a copyright strike, because uh, I would love to play this for you. Uh, you know, I just got an email from YouTube uh, yesterday talking about this new service they are encouraging uh, Collapse Chronicles to sign up for, and. What they're telling me is that with my permission, unbelievably, they're asking my permission uh, to put a tracker on Collapse Chronicles videos, you know, now that my channel is monetized, to find out whether anybody else on any other YouTube channel is, quote, stealing my material, you know, making money off of my material. And uh, like, Sam, we can track every YouTube channel and if we find anybody is stealing your material to make a nickel off of your work, uh, we can bust them. And, you know, for copyright uh, infringements, you can imagine the uh, the no thank you letter I, I, I sent to YouTube. I don't get this copyright crap. Uh, all of my videos on all of my channels are done what's called Creative Commons. Uh, you know, anybody uh, who wants to use uh, my videos on their channels, by all means, I would be greatly honored uh, for anybody uh, out there to use my uh, to, to use my material, uh, I, I don't get it. Uh, I, I I would be promoting all of these uh, videos, you know, musicians, uh, comedians, whatnot. I would be promoting these people, giving them a wider audience, calling attention. Anyway, I, 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 enough of that rant. I just don't get this copyright infringement crap. Uh, it, it, it's gone completely out of hand. There's a difference between plagiarism and copyright. But uh, the, these greedy SOBs uh, on Netflix would bust my chops in one second. I, I'm, I'm scared to even... Uh, put a video of the gore, the gore. Anyway, so what is Breaking Boundaries, the Science of Our Planet? What it is is an hour and 15 minute documentary where David Attenborough and scientist Johan Rockström examine Earth's biodiversity collapse and how this crisis can still be averted. You know, Johan Rockström, I, uh, I invited uh, Johan to, be, to come on Collapse Chronicles uh, and talk to us. He, 
he politely declined to be interviewed on Collapse Chronicles because, hey, he is making Netflix documentaries with David Attenborough. And so, guys, uh, I was actually thinking, good Lord, I, are, am I getting ready to hear an hour and 15 minutes of just hopium? And I am thrilled to report that the first hour of the hour and 15 minutes was one of the greatest hours of doomer porn that I have ever seen. I, I mean, Johan and David and a few other people and Netflix, they knocked it out of the park. Uh, and what they do in the first hour, what David and Johan do, is explain all of this concept of the planetary boundaries that uh, humanity is crossing, these nine planetary boundaries, that there's nine of these things. Now, obviously, they start with climate change because people, so many people think that climate change is the only planetary boundary. So they start with that one, but then they remind us there are eight other planetary boundaries. And what David and Johan do is they go down the list of the nine planetary boundaries and show kind of how far we are getting, or more importantly, uh, the ones that we are beyond the tipping point, uh, where we are in the yellow or the red zone. I guess there's four of them that we have uh, are either in the yellow or the red zone. Now, of course, uh, I would say we are uh, in the red zone on probably nine of the nine. But uh, anybody trying to understand uh, these nine planetary boundaries and, and how we are just nine reasons we are completely doomed. The absolute hopelessness of the situation, it, it, it is the gore uh, that they use to illustrate, uh, uh, you know, nine planetary boundaries. Well, I guess the ozone boundary is the one they save to the end, that the ozone boundary that apparently is the only one going in the right direction. Uh, if I had a BS detected button even on that one, I would be hitting it. But the other eight, <clears throat> they spend one hour spelling out, spelling out in plain English uh, why, why humanity, civilization, and most importantly, every earthling we share this planet with are doomed. It is one solid hour of in-your-face doomer porn. Uh, just, uh, just, you know, boundary after boundary after boundary. How humans have, uh, how have humans put this planet on course with uh, with disaster and then one of the you know the the newest cliche they they of course they they use the closing window cliche uh, which we've been hearing the first time I I heard that cliche that the window of opportunity to save this planet I believe was came from our plundered planet in 1948. In 1948, I can't remember the author of that excellent Doomer porn book from 1948, talking about how our window of opportunity to save the planet is closing. But once again, uh, I you know I just interviewed this fellow Gerardo Ceballos, and uh, he is claiming that we have 10 to 15 years now. Johan uh, is claiming that the 2020s are the decade where the future of humanity and life on this planet will be, uh, we're either gonna turn the freight train around or we're not.
in the 2020s. I think Deb Ozarko, what do you call it, Deb, the, that the 2020s will be the decade of the great unraveling is what I believe Deb correctly uh, calls it. But the 2020s will be the most exciting decade in the history of humanity and one of the most exciting decades in the history of the planet. Uh, what is going to come down on this planet uh, in, in the 2020s. And so what they do uh, for one solid hour is, is offer incontrovertible uh, evidence that at least eight of the nine planetary boundaries, that 100% of the evidence points that we are going in the wrong direction, uh, that the assaults on this planet are speeding up, they are gaining momentum, there is not one shred, well outside uh, of the questionable fact whether we have uh, dodged the ozone bullet or not, uh, other than that one, uh, they offer exactly zero evidence that one damn thing is being done to uh, turn this freight train around. And in fact, uh, they offer one solid hour of, I would call it proof, it's not even evidence anymore, it's proof that uh, we are on the road to ruin. There is no way we are going to turn this freight train around. Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, uh, some subjects, some words you will never hear in this, in, in this uh, documentary. I'm pretty sure you will never hear the name Jair Bozo Nero, uh, never mentioned, the single biggest planet eater on the planet, never found a cameo appearance, uh, even when they were talking about the biome, the, the biome is one uh, planetary boundary uh, with tropical rainforests leading the pack. Uh, but of course, more than that, uh, you will obviously, guys, I mean, this was a Netflix original documentary. This was Netflix bankrolling uh, this documentary. And uh, obviously, uh, in, 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 a, in, in an hour and 15 minute documentary about how and why humans are, are taking every one of these planetary boundaries over the edge uh, and what we can do about it, you will not hear the word overpopulation nowhere uh, in, in, in this hour and 15 minutes. Does David Attenborough, does Johan Rockstrom, uh, do any of the other dozen or so scientists that they interview, uh, not one person breathes the word overpopulation. I'm pretty sure, I would have to listen to it again, I am pretty sure the word population is never mentioned, at least human population. Now, they probably mention uh, the word population when they're talking about the collapse and crash and burn of populations of our fellow Earthlings going to zero, uh, which is the main focus of my interview with Gerardo Ceballos, which I'll publish on Sunday. Uh, but other than that, you sure as hell are not going to hear uh, in the very discussion of human population, much less overpopulation, it is the third rail 
of uh, the, these BS environmental documentaries, how you can sit there for one hour going through uh, planetary boundary after planetary boundary after planetary boundary collapsing and falling and never mention the word overpopulation or uh, even population is more evidence of anything than, uh, you know, of how screwed we are, is the, the fact that Netflix uh, is, is, isn't going to touch the subject with a 10-foot pole. The single biggest uh, environmental issue on this planet, by far, bar None. And then, of course, you know what happens in the last 15 minutes, and you can see it happening. You can hear the little music change in the background where uh, David and Johan and whoever else, uh, after one solid hour of spelling out that we are doomed and there's not a damn thing uh, that humanity uh, is going to do about it that they can do about it or will do about it, even if they could do anything about it. Uh, one hour of that, then we have 15 minutes where this deluded old fart, uh, David Attenborough and uh, Johan Rockström, just completely uh, disappear into this little fantasy land for 15 minutes talking about how we are going to turn this freight train around uh, in the 2020s, how humanity, there is no reason that David Attenborough and Johan Rockström can see to be pessimistic about the future of humanity and this planet, that there's no reason that uh, we humans cannot turn it around. We simply, of course, we simply stop eating meat. We stop eating meat, and then I love it, we stop making trash. We just stop making trash. We stop eating meat, and we stop making trash. And all of our problems are solved. Uh, they, they actually show the, uh, the, on their little diagram, they actually show the, uh, the various planetary boundaries reversing course when uh, people stop eating meat and just simply stop making trash. Uh, as far as I know, I never heard the word plastic mentioned. Oh, and of course, uh, getting rid of fossil fuels. That's the other one. Uh, you know, the other base, stop eating meat, stop making trash, and getting rid of fossil fuels and replacing it with uh, this green, clean energy. You, you know, the, one of the biggest lies. It's not as big as the overpopulation lie, but, uh, you know, just uh, promulgating the, this over-the-top BS solution about how the Green New Deal, uh, how these windmills uh, and solar panels are, uh, are by, by giving humans more and more energy, uh, by feeding this out-of-control cancer, giving it more and more energy uh, is going to save the planet. Uh, it, 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 it is a descent into absolute lunacy. David Attenborough, Johan Rockström, and everybody they interview. They even interview that guy, that climatologist, Jason Box. Remember Jason who got in all of that hot water about 10 years ago. Uh, climatologist Jason Box, and I'm going to use the F word because I'm simply quoting, Jason Box said 10 years ago, we are fucked. And, and Jason Box knows damn well uh, that we are a lot more uh, effed today than we were 10 years ago. 
and, and bringing Jason Box uh, onto this uh, program to rub our faces into it. Uh, this hopium crap, this apocalyptic hopium smoking, I, I, you know, I, I just don't get it, guys. Where it comes? What does David Attenborough have to lose? Uh, that old fart is what is he? Ninety-three years old. Ninety-three. Come on, David Attenborough, you have nothing to lose by coming out. I, I've mentioned this hilarious video uh, that you can find on YouTube with that guy uh, doing his David Attenborough impression, you know, changing Blue Planet to Eft Planet. Uh, it is absolutely hilarious. It's two and a half minutes long. It's where the guy is, I uh, can't remember his name, he's funny as hell. Uh, where, you know, imitating David Attenborough speaking honestly uh, without the hopium delusion. Uh, I, I, I mean, what is the reason uh, that they're doing this? I, I, I guess it's simply, uh, it, I, I guess it's just, I, I, I honestly don't know why. Uh, I guess so. They so Netflix uh, can keep having a customer base. So you know they can go from this uh, show uh, over to the Big Lebowski. I noticed that the, that Netflix is promoting the Big Lebowski, and uh, which is going to be what I watch tonight. That uh, haven't seen the Big Lebowski, but anyway, guys, uh, I highly recommend this uh, documentary, uh, Breaking Boundaries, The Science of the Planet. I highly recommend it, but if you are someone with a brain uh, who gets as riled up by all this hopium as I do, uh, I highly advise turning off your computer one hour into it and you will be glowing with Doomer porn. And uh, you will have the post Doomer porn, Doomer porn glow if you simply turn it off after one hour b before the descent into madness uh, with this crap coming out of David Attenborough and Johan Rockstrom's mouth. Uh, I wanted to reach through the computer and just throttle both of them. Anyway, I am. I see the mailman just uh, came by. I'm hoping my ambrosia cantaloupe seeds are in the mail because my first planting of ambrosia cantaloupes was a big fat failure. So we're going to head to the mailbox and see if we have some ambrosia cantaloupe seeds waiting for us. I suggest you enjoy your ambrosia cantaloupe while you still can. Bye guys. Yeah, slow dog.